Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back. Here we are continuing our series in best practices in managing projects in Camtasia. And my guest again here today is Jason Vallad, Master Trainer from TechSmith's Customer Success Team. How are you doing today, Jason? I'm doing good, Gord. Thanks again. This has been a lot of fun. I love, love sharing great information about Camtasia with people. And today's going to be a doozy because we're taking a, a little bit of a, a, a deep dive into the area of project portability. We had a question from Brad Friedman of the Friedman Group, and he'd like more of a discussion on portability. He says, I often need to work on the same project on my desktop and my laptop. And as you know, Jason, um, you know, with Camtasia, we have the ability to work between multiple operating systems with Windows and Mac. Plus, there's, you know, desktops, laptops, people may have a multitude of machines and work at office and at home. So I know you have lots of experience in this area. So perhaps you can get us started and, and, and share with us how you do this whole portability thing. Yeah, absolutely, Gord. Let's take a look at a project that I have open in Camtasia right now. So as you can see, Gord, this is a pretty involved project. Uh, the timeline is pretty busy. There's, uh, I think, seven tracks, maybe eight, nine tracks worth of material here on the timeline and a very full media bin. Assets, including audio, still images, video, logos, you name it, it's in there. So the first thing I want to do is, before I get ready to make this project portable, I want to ask a couple questions. First, is my project in a good place? And what I mean by that is, have I gotten it to a place where I can comfortably step away from it? I'm not in the middle of script writing. I haven't been captioning it at that moment and not put it at like the end of a sentence or the end of a break. Uh, I just want to make sure the video is ready for me to step away from it so that when I come back, I'm not, what, what was I doing? Where am I? <laughs> so that's the first thing I'm going to do. And then, of course, because it never is a terrible idea to save, I'm going to save the project, either Control-S or doing a file save in Camtasia. Now, I need to decide how am I going to get this project to my other location. For, so for me, most of the time, I work here in my office, and I have a very powerful tower-style PC computer. And when I'm going to work from another location, it's usually in my home office, uh, either on my Windows laptop or I have a Mac laptop as well. Majority of the time I'm spending is in Windows because I work with a powerful Windows machine. A lot of my clients and a lot of the people that I work with are on Windows. So I would say better than 90 to 95% of the time I'm on Windows. But the process we're going to show today could work for either Windows or Mac. And we'll show what that looks like. Okay. Can I just uh, ask a quick question here, Jason? Absolutely. Um, does knowing whether you're going to go from Mac sorry, Mac to PC or Windows to Mac or Windows to Windows or, or Mac to Mac affect what, what you're going to do structurally in, in, in your projects? I just wanted to throw that in as, you know, a factor to consider in as you walk through your example when you do your saving and sharing, if you could tell us how that comes into play. So for the most part, Camtasia 2018 for Windows and Camtasia 2018 for Mac are largely the same. There are some key differences that are very specific to each OS. And in my project case, I know I haven't used any assets that aren't available on both platforms. Sometimes it's a font that's supported. Sometimes it's a, a particular shape. But remember, if I pull a project into my Mac computer that was created on Windows where Mac doesn't support a small part of the timeline or an asset, so to speak, it will be ghosted on the timeline so that I can easily replace it with something similar for it to work. But for the most part, because the products are becoming so much closer together in, in being equal, which they'll never be perfectly equal, but I have confidence that I could share it across platforms and not slow down my process. So okay. great question though. Mm -hmm. So I got to decide how, what am I going to use to port, make this portable piece and transport it? Am I going to share it to a cloud destination like a Google Drive, a Dropbox? Because these files are video files. They tend to be pretty large. Or am I going to put it on something as simple as a thumb drive that has enough space? Um, in this case, it doesn't matter. We're going to prep the project so that it's ready for any of those locations. The other thing I have to remember is wherever I'm going to be doing the further editing that's not at this particular location is do I have a licensed version of Camtasia running on that other machine? Meaning is it available for me to launch? And for those who don't know, 
uh, your Camtasia license actually allows you, if you're the primary user, to install it on two machines in two locations. Great example is someone has a computer sitting at their office that they bought Camtasia for, and they have a computer at home. As long as they're both not running at the exact same time, you are allowed to do that with your license. So that's a key. And, and Jason, if I could ask, is that means if I had a Windows machine at the office and at home I was using my Mac, I could, it's fine that you have a, the license will cover to run on both OSs? That's a correct. As long as they're not running at the same time and that you are the primary user, there's absolutely no problem with that. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yep. So let's get this project ready to share. So for those who have been using Camtasia for a while, you'll notice and know that our project here is called a TSC project, TechSmith Corporation project file. If I just share that project file with myself in another location, or if perhaps I emailed this to Gord, uh, all the connections that were made from the project file back to the media, all those pointers would be broken because they'd be looking at my local computer for them. So we need to get this project and all of its associated assets together in one place so that they can be opened on a new computer. And here's how you do it. Make sure, of course, you save your project, which you've already done once, but never a reason to not save multiple times. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to the file menu here in Camtasia. And down here in the menus, I have a couple options, one that says export as zip and one that says export for Mac. The decision I simply have to make is what machine am I going to be opening this project on next? For me, it's going to be a PC, so I'm going to choose the export for zip, but I could easily choose export for Mac and the process would be the same. So Gord, let's go ahead and export this as zip. When I select that, Camtasia is going to ask me, where do I want this zip file stored? In this case, I'm actually putting it in a folder on my desktop uh, called Gord, but we'll put it right at the desktop level here. And we'll call it gordisman.zip because it takes its name from the project file. I'll make sure the button is checked that says include all files from the media bin in the zips because I want to make sure everything is there ready for me to go. And then I hit OK. Depending on the power and the speed of your machine, that project will get zipped up and ready to go, and it's now in that location. As a matter of fact, we can look for it by bringing up our file explorer here, and there is that zip file that we just created here with Camtasia. Can I ask you a quick question here, Jason? Yes. One thing I think is important for people to realize, although they have the option for cloud storage, depending on the kind of service they have, um, some, some may be much slower than others. So if you're on a service that it's going to take a while to load a big project file with lots of media assets, you're probably better if you can go with like the flash drive or some external portable drive solution to, to copy things onto would, would, would be a better solution, right? I agree. I always have flash drives with me. I, I carry a ton of little 32 gig thumb drives with me. I have a terabyte one that I travel with. It never hurts to have multiple copies, Gord. Never hurts. And because of speed capabilities and download times, you know, my connection at the office is outstanding. My office connection at home is pretty good. But if time is a factor, which for the most part it is, you want to make sure that you're giving yourself the best opportunity to pull that project into Camtasia. So let's do that. Let's pretend we've transported home. I have now launched Camtasia with a clean slate here. It's a brand new project. And I insert whatever flash drive I've used or flash or cloud storage location for that zip project. Now I simply go into Camtasia, go to file, and I don't go to open project because that would be pulling up a project that's local on my machine. What I'm going to actually do is go down below where those zipped options were and go to import zipped project. When I select that option, Camtasia is going to ask me two questions. One, what project file am I going to import? So I go to my desktop or wherever my location was that I saved that file and click on the zip file. And I click open. And then it's going to ask, where do you want that project to be saved? When it's done, I'll just save it to the desktop for this particular uh, example. And then I'll click on OK. Now Camtasia is going to unpack that project. So now Camtasia's unpacked that zip file, and I have my project in the exact same space, in the exact same position, and in the exact same readiness level that it was when I zipped it up. The media bin is full of all those same assets, and it's ready to go. So when I save this now, Gord, it's going to be saved on whatever local machine I have it on. So 
I need to start thinking, and we'll talk about this actually in another video, but I want to think about those naming conventions again, like we did in our previous video about the library. Uh, this project name is currently Gord Ismond, but I need to think for myself, how do I differentiate this project from the edits I'm going to make? So what I typically do is I go up to File, and instead of Save, I choose Save As, and I add a dot one or dot two at the end of the name. So now I have Gord Isman dot one as my project, and I'll know that any changes I make to this project, like maybe I delete this caption or pull out this, um, this uh, spotlight tool and get rid of that or whatever edits I'm going to make, I now know that this dot one iteration is newer or more current than the original one. Can you explain, Jason, why you did the save right away? I did it right away because it's a habit. It's a good habit to get in because I want to save it in a position where it's fresh into my machine. Otherwise, I'm going to be making changes to a file that's still the same name as the one I brought in. Now, granted, you still have that zip file either on your flash drive or in your cloud location that you can pull from constantly as a source file. But I always encourage people to get in the habit of, of saving right away before they begin their edits so that they're um, programming themselves to change the name, to change the naming convention so that they don't get out of order. There are some projects where I have 15, 16, even 20 versions of the same project that I've made small or large iterations on. And I want to be able to go back to any particular one at any particular point. Maybe I'm experimenting with a sound effect. Maybe I'm anticipating uh, pushback on some fonts. I just want to make sure that I have every available source ready for me. Yeah, so. I often use the same the same approach because sometimes, you know, you may decide, you know, I'm going to experiment to do something here. It might not mm -hmm. work out. So I want to save a version and then have a temporary version that, you know, may represent that I've named it something that describes the, you know, the special feature I'm trying to do and always have where I was at just before to revert back to, you know, and I'm saying it's good practice to do that stuff. You know, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's in addition to, you know, naming re, uh, the final file that you're going to share back again. Right. Yep. We're always trying to make future us feel better about where they start their project. Gord. So I've even had uh, times in my Camtasia life where I've left a marker on the timeline that says, Jason, start here so that I can then zip up that file, that marker remains in place, and then I can just delete the marker and move on. But the process now, I've worked on it at home. I can simply go to file, zip that project up again, and we're good to go, ready from whatever machine I'm going to ingest it to the next time. That's super. So Gord, uh, it's, it's something to think about if you're going to be working across multiple platforms, across multiple locations, to know where your source files are, to know where you're going to store them, and to have a great naming convention in place. Other than that, Camtasia is set up to make sure that you're prepared to have the most success possible by zipping all those project files together so you can start from a clean place every time in your project. Well, that was great, Jason. Thanks for sharing those examples today with us and giving us a perspective on, you know, how to be portable across the different operating systems as well as within a given operating system and, and the physical devices, whether a desktop or, or a laptop. And I, I think that was a very useful example for people to get a feel for things. And um, I look forward to our next video in the series. And thank you again, Jason, for joining me today and sharing. Thanks, Gord. I look forward to the next one. All right. Thank you, everybody. See you in the next video.